Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank the Renosys team for inviting me today to be part of this uh, Magento user group uh, meetup. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Santil, and I head up the sales team for DHL e-commerce uh, Singapore. So I'll speak a little bit about what we do in DHL and uh, how we are trying to help e-commerce customers. And Lalit mentioned a good point, right? E-commerce is basically an ecosystem of which we are all a part. So I presume most of you are in the tech uh, area, but uh, I'm not sure exactly where we fit into the whole ecosystem. My view of things is it starts right from the tech, but it ends with delivery and returns. So DHL sits right at the, at the end of it. Without a complete ecosystem, it's, not a, it's never a positive customer experience, right? So we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, DHL. I'll introduce DHL as a group, right? There are many, many different business units. I'll talk about the business unit that I am in particularly. I won't go into too much details. Uh, my, con my contact details will be available to everyone if there's any detailed discussions that you or your customers would like to have, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, reach, uh, reach out to me. Right? We'll then move into various shipping methods, transportation methods, logistics related uh, queries. Uh, I'll try to answer as much as possible. And we'll talk about returns and the considerations that one needs to look at before choosing uh, uh, an appropriate or right logistics partner. I'll quickly end off by talking a little bit about our integration plans with Magento to see how um, uh, how we're using technology to power our logistics chain and, um, and hopefully end off with a, with a very quick question and answer session. So DHL, in case uh, you guys are not exactly that familiar, is part of the Deutsche Post group. Deutsche Post basically is the German post office. A few years ago, Deutsche Post went on a spree of uh, purchases, mergers and acquisitions. So they bought over Excel, uh, Tibet in Britain, they bought over um, uh, Danzas, and they also bought over DHL Express and they branded it or rebranded it DHL across the globe, right? So within DHL, there are four main business units. Uh, one is the post e-commerce parcel group to which I belong. Uh, there is the DHL Express. This is probably the company that most of you are familiar with. The courier guy that delivers the packages is the fastest, most efficient form of delivery service, but perhaps the most expensive. We've also got DHL Global Forwarding, which is a freight forwarding uh, business. And there's also supply chain, which is warehousing. The whole concept of this uh, is that DHL is able to facilitate customers who want to ship something as light as a letter or an envelope to something as heavy as a container or sea freight. That's the, that's the idea. It's to give customers a one-stop solution for their entire logistics needs. So these are just some statistics, right? So we are the number one in International Express Delivery. Express is the next day delivery, the, the fastest, most efficient way, which is what I, what I was mentioning. Forwarding refers to sea freight, air freight, the, the more heavier cargo, uh, the odd dimension cargo kind of delivery, and contract logistics and e-commerce. So e-commerce specifically relates to, to deliveries, domestic deliveries, returns, uh, expedited deliveries, and hybrid deliveries. Some e-commerce trends for, for you, right, which uh, I'm not sure if any, any, you guys may or may not be aware. Everybody tries to talk or tends to talk about domestic e-commerce consumption. But the trends and our analysis leads us to believe that cross-border um, online retail is predicted to grow at twice the rate of domestic, right? So that means there's going to be a whole lot of complexities involved in logistics, in customs clearance, in dealing with different consumer markets, different demographics, different cultures, different areas of, um, of challenges, which also presents um, opportunity as well, right? So we from a DHL perspective, are trying to cover both angles. Uh, we have domestic delivery infrastructure. We also have international delivery infrastructure, and we're trying to marry the two together to come up with a holistic uh, solution for everyone. So I'll just talk a little bit about the various shipping methods that one can use as an e-commerce uh, platform or a customer, right? There is the postal method, which is um, Delivery done by the post service. So if you send something from Singapore using SingPost or even DHL e-commerce to let's say the US via the postal method, the final delivery will be done by the destination country's post office. So if you send it to US, for example, it will be delivered by USPS or United States Postal Service, right? If you send it to India, it will be the, the Indian post, uh, Postal Service. Australia will be AUPO. So postal service is the most common uh, delivery method. It represents about 75 to 80 percent of the global e-commerce logistics uh, um, chain. Uh, however, it comes with uh, certain uh, challenges and inefficiencies. Right? There's only there's a weight limit, 
it is pro probably the slowest. There's a lot of uh, inefficiencies uh, related to that chain. As you can imagine, traditionally the post offices didn't start off uh, with e-commerce in mind, right? It was just to deliver envelopes and letters and etc. With e-commerce boom, they had to they had to adjust. And being very large, typically government organisations, most of them did not really adapt. There are some who are much more efficient at it, and there are some who are not, right? So it's still the most uh, popular, most commonly used because of price, because of the network that the postal uh, uh, postal uh, agencies have. The second transportation method is express. Express is the fastest, is the most efficient. You're looking at, you're talking about companies such as DHL Express, of course, FedEx, UPS, TNT. When you give them or these guys a shipment, you more or less know that you're going to get it the next day or the very next day in a very efficient way. There's full tracking, but it obviously means that it's going to be much more expensive. I'm sure most of you have used express companies before. It's not the cheapest, but with the price, you get a service. In the market now, there's also an influx or there's a steady growth of hybrid solutions. Hybrid, well, what I mean by that is it's a mix of the two. So what typically happens is we freight in on a console level or a bulk level into a destination country and we inject it into a domestic network, domestic courier network. That leads to efficiency in terms of cost. So it's not as expensive as express. It's not as slow and as unpredictable as post. So this has been taking the logistics industry by storm. So if you read like uh, Lazada's, Amazon's, uh, Alibaba, they all come up with their own logistics chain, right? Q10 comes up with Q Express. The model that they use is bring it in, let's say, from China on a console basis. They hand it over to Q Express or they hand it over to etc. 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 and it gets delivered within two or three days. So DHL e commerce also has this uh, capability, also has this facility. We're trying to connect the dots globally. Right now, there are um, a few key trade lanes that we cover. We do not cover all, but uh, we're trying to get there. And finally, local destination warehouse is where you grow or a certain destination becomes big enough where you need, you need to store goods within that country and inject or deliver domestically without uh, doing cross-border. So typically, customers start off doing cross-border, then they move into domestic uh, or destination-based warehousing once the, once the volumes get higher. So obviously, this I won't spend too much time. You've got to look at the speed, the cost, market size and complexity before choosing the right shipping method. Some shipping methods work for some people, some work for some products, some works for certain demographics, some works for certain companies. If you're obviously if you're shipping an iPad or a diamond necklace, you would not be, be using the post, you'd be using Express. If your product price is, is two bucks, you shouldn't be using uh, uh, an Express service which would be higher than the, the cost of the goods as well. So returns is uh, often uh, ignored portion in the entire ecosystem, right? Everybody thinks it's going to be a beautiful checkout system and everybody's going, to like the, everybody's going to like the product and never return it. There are two types of returns actually in the, in the, in the e-commerce world, the intended return and the unintended return. The unintended return is when the courier guy, the delivery guy tries to go and deliver, he or she is not at home, the customer is not at home, right? So two or three attempts later, he or she is still not at home. That's an unintended return, it goes back in a different way. An intended return is when the consumption has already been made, at least temporarily. So let's say I buy a, 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 a pair of jeans, I try it on, I don't like it, it's too, it's too tight or whatever. If I want to return, that's, a, that's an intended return. Both comes with different logistics complexities. Typically speaking, the unintended return is somewhat easier because there's always a natural flow of returning it back to the origin or to the center. Intended return comes with the same complexities as delivery. You need to arrange for pickup. You need to have a drop-off point, a pickup point, uh, and then it has to go back to origin. So there are many different ways of dealing with this, a postal way of dealing with this, the express way of dealing with this, the hybrid way of dealing with this. The most efficient is to have a local console point in the country of delivery, right? Again, that you need certain volume to, to, to justify such, a, such an investment. So choosing the right logistics partner for your e-commerce needs. Again, it's somewhat similar to choosing the right transportation uh, method. You have to choose a partner that can be able, flexible enough to do the things that you need, determine the right shipping method, and then choose between a global partner or a bespoke partner, right? So in DHL, we try to pride ourselves in being a global company yet flexible enough to deal with SMEs all the way to MNCs. So hopefully, uh, if you guys can, um, we can talk about this at, a, at an another stage. I'll end my presentation with some information about our proposed integration in Magento. So we 
like to think of ourselves as a logistics company powered by technology. So we have uh, already plugins with various uh, e-commerce platforms. The Magento uh, plugin, I, I'm not a tech person, so please forgive me, uh, is up and coming. It's going to be completed by the end of this year. What that basically means is if you produce a website on the Magento platform, um, the preparation of our shipping labels will be automatically linked. There wouldn't need to be necessarily an a independent API being done by the customer website to, to, our, to our systems. Not just uh, shipment preparation, shipment labor preparation, but the shipment tracking features will also be automatically linked. So this will be coming up very, very soon. We hope that this will enable or entice uh, companies and customers who use the Magento platform to automatically then uh, prefer to use DHL as a, as a shipping partner. So with that, I thank you very much and, I, and I'll take questions uh, at this point if there are any. Yep. Cold chain. Cold chain. Yeah, cold chain. So uh, cold chain we do, as a DHL group we do, uh, not specifically from the BU that I'm from, but supply chain and DHL global forwarding does. So I can, I can take your contact details later on if you, if you would like to find out more about that. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Oh, hold on, one more. Just last question. Uh, in, in Singapore, do you do bonded warehouse? Yes, we do. Uh, means for e-commerce deliveries. Basically, so the so warehouse. Whatever is clear, for that I pay the duty. For what not clear, I don't pay the duty. That kind of thing, because it's very popular in cross-border e-commerce. Uh, you hit a very good point. So the warehouse that Himanshu and I are based in is actually within the Changi Alps area. So if you're familiar with that area, that's basically a free trade zone. That's the, the entire zone is bonded. So what we do is uh, for customers. Uh, we ship in bulk from, let's say, China or, or US, right? In, in let's say, uh, 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 two or three pallets will come. And if the value is above 400 Singapore dollars, one needs to pay the GST, right? But if it comes to a bonded warehouse, you don't, you're right? And if I issue out piece by piece, then you don't, you don't have to pay, right? So we, we do have the facility, yes. But do you integrate with the customers directly for that part, or currently you provide the services to the customers? We, we, pro we, we provide the uh, service. So as long as they so what this facility is, uh, is meant to be is, is a cross-dock facility. If you're supposed to ship it into Singapore and if you ship it out, there's no duty, right? If you, sh if you domestically consume, as long as it's above 400 GST, you should pay. But if you, if you clear piece by piece and you deliver individual B to C, the government has afforded a facility that you still don't need to pay, right? As long as it's below 400. Yeah, so we have the ability, we, can, we do it every day now actually. Yeah, so again, if you would like to find out more about this for, I don't know, your own personal needs or your customers' needs, we can, we can have a chat about it. So even if it's to the same destination and you split up the package to keep it below 400? No, okay. that you can't. So let's say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you, if you ship it to uh, Sentil, uh, four, four different items, right? And you just put it 399 each, and the customs guys will catch you. Yeah. So <laughs> the compliance, I, I'm... I'm the I, very <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, it, it, you, you have a chance of not being caught, but as a, uh, as a representative of DHR, we, we, we don't do that uh, compliance-wise. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. for this informational presentation.